This week I had a client project land on my desk that required the section background to rotate through different images and have a crossfade effect and kind of zoom in and zoom out. It's something that I haven't tackled before inside of Generate Blocks, and as I'm trying to avoid adding a bunch of unnecessary JavaScript to the site, I was looking at trying to figure out a CSS only solution. So I've come up with a solution that works pretty well. It's not without a few little drawbacks, which we'll talk about in this video, but I want to go ahead and share this with you in case this is something that could be useful on one of your projects. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at how it works. Now I'll go ahead and warn you up front. This is going to be a fairly code heavy tutorial. Uh, I am going to go through the process of writing out all this CSS as we go through this tutorial. Of course, there's a link down in the description of the video where you can copy and paste all this so you don't have to rewrite it yourself. But I thought it would be good for the purposes of understanding how this works to actually go through all the code and understand what is responsible for doing different things. So we will spend a bit of time in here writing some CSS. Uh, I don't pretend to be the world's expert on these things. So I do hack my way through a little bit of it, uh, but I'll do my best to explain it the way I understand it. And hopefully that will make sense to you. Of course, if you have any questions, just drop them down in the comments and I'll be glad to help out. So we're gonna start out by just adding a container in here. Now, the only thing we're gonna do to this is change this inner, con inner container width to full width. And we're gonna scroll down to the bottom under the advanced tab and we're gonna give it an additional class of bg hyphen fade hyphen wrapper. And that's all we need to do to this container because we're gonna build out everything inside of it. This is just kind of a wrapper to control all of this. So inside of that, we'll go ahead and drop our first container in here. This one is actually gonna be the container that has all of the content for this section. So we can go ahead and give this a little bit of a design. I'm gonna go ahead and give this uh, quite a bit of padding here just so we have some space to work in. And since this is gonna have images in the background, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a dark background color for now and white text, just so I can see what I'm doing. Later, we'll need to remove that background, but this will give us a good starting place. So now all we need to do is design our hero section. I'll just do something easy and generic just for the purposes of this demo. We'll drop in an H1. And then on my keyboard, I have a little bit of website Ipsum and we'll drop in a button. So this is a fairly generic hero section, something you'd see typically. All right, so what we need to do now is we can go ahead and close up that grid and close up this container. If we click back on this outer container that we set up, we can add a container inside of it that's gonna go just underneath the one that has all of our hero content. Now this is gonna be where we actually put in all the images for the backgrounds. So for this, all we need to do is scroll down to this additional CSS classes and we're gonna add bg hyphen fade to this. And now we just set the background images inside of our background image inside of this container for what we want to be on our slides. So we'll grab this first one and then we can go ahead and duplicate this for our second image and duplicate it again for our third image since this is gonna have three images that rotate through. So we'll go ahead and grab this, uh, this middle container here and we'll change it to our next image and then the bottom container will change to our last image. So before we go and start writing the CSS we're gonna need, let's just take a look at the structure again. Essentially, we have one container here that just wraps everything that's been set to full width on the inner container, and we've given it the class of BG Fade Wrapper. Inside of that, we have a container, which is actually the design for our hero section, and below that, but not within, not inside of it, but just below it, are three containers. Each of those just have a background image and the class BG hyphen fade. So now that we got that set up, we can go ahead and update this and we'll go take a look on the front end. Of course, we can't see those images that we put in because they don't have any height or width, but this is where we gotta start writing a bunch of CSS. Now to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and do it all inside of the customizer just to make it easy for us to see as we go along. And I'll try to explain this code the best I can as we go through it. If you're familiar with CSS, none of this is very crazy, so you'll understand. But if this is your first time doing something like this, hopefully a little bit of explanation will help. So we're gonna do BG fade wrapper, and we're gonna set its position, which I can never seem to spell, to relative which I also have trouble spelling. And then we're gonna set the overflow to hidden. And that's all we need to do on the outside wrapper here. 
The next thing we need to do is target that BG fade class. So we'll do BG fade, and we need to write a bunch of rules for this. So the first one is gonna be, we're gonna do position absolute, and we're gonna do the content just completely blank. And that's basically gonna set it up so these images, we're gonna get them to fill that entire wrapper section. They're absolutely positioned to their next relative parent, which is this wrapper section. We'll do a width of 100%, so they take up the full width. We'll do a height of 100%, so they take up the full height. We'll do inset, inset of zero. So this is basically top, bottom, left, and right, all of zero, just shorthand for that. And then we'll manipulate our background image by saying background size of cover. That will make sure that the image is not cropped. We'll do a background position of center, center. And we're gonna do an opacity of zero. Now you see here in a few, we're gonna actually do an animation that makes the opacity change. That's what gives it the fading in and fading out effect. But for now, we wanna start them all with the opacity of zero. So speaking of the animations, I'm gonna go ahead and write all these uh, kind of in the long form just so you can see what each of them do. The first one is animation name. And we get to make up this name for this, this animation. I've just called it fade zoom since that's what it does. We're gonna do an animation duration of 18 seconds. And we'll talk a little bit more about why it's 18 seconds here in a few. And then we'll do an animation iteration count of infinite. And that will just make sure that the animation continues to run over and over and over. It won't just do it one time and then stop. All right. So now we need to actually target each one of these individual images. And you'll notice that I gave them all the same class of BG fade because they're, gonna in, they're, they're all gonna share these same properties here. So I can write all that on one class instead of giving them each their own class. But I need to be able to target them all individually. So what I'm gonna do here is do BG fade, and then we'll do a colon, and we'll do nth hyphen child, and we're gonna do two. Now, if you haven't used the nth childs before, it's basically saying, uh, get this class and then get one of its children. And we're saying the second ch child of this class. So get an element of this class and find its second child. And all we're gonna be doing with this is doing a little prep work for our animations. So on this one, we're gonna do an animation delay of zero seconds. Now we can go ahead and copy this because we need to target the third child and fourth child. So we can change this next one here to third child. We're gonna change this to a six second delay. And the fourth child, we're gonna to change to a 12 second delay. Again, this kind of goes back to this 18 second duration. It's gonna tie into our keyframe animation and I'll explain kind of how I've set this up. If you wanna make changes like more or less slides, you do have to go back and manipulate a lot of this CSS. So we'll talk a little bit about how it works so you can get an understanding if you wanna play around with this and kind of make it your own. All right, so at this point, what we need to do is go ahead and set up our keyframe animation. So to do this, we'll type in at keyframes and then a space, and then we'll talk about our key, our animation name. So we call this fade zoom. So we can just type in fade zoom. We'll open our brackets here, and now we need to write each one of these stops in the animation. So the first thing we're gonna do is say at 0%, we want it to do something. And what we want it to do is have an opacity of zero, and we want the transform scale to be 100%. Then, at the next stop, we want to do 16.66% and we want to do an opacity of one and we'll leave the transform as it is. And as you can see, now that we got this in here, we already have some movement going on, which is great. Uh, obviously, we got some things to do still, but you can see that this is working now. So essentially what this keyframe animation is doing is taking it from an opacity of zero and then at 16% of the duration of this animation, it's going to change the opacity to one. And since all of these uh, children, these images are set to their own individual delay, it's all happening at a different time. But we need to finish up this animation so it all works smoothly. The next one we're gonna do at 33% and we're gonna do an opacity of one. We'll do another one here at 48.66% and we'll do an opacity of zero. And then 
Lastly, we'll do one at 100%, and we'll do an opacity of zero, and a transform scale of 110%. Now what that's gonna do is actually have that transform to make it look like it's kind of growing. So at the beginning of the animation, it's at 100%, and here at the end of the animation, it's grown to 110%. So that gives it the effect that it's actually kind of zooming in. Now we can see here we have a bit of a problem with our Z index. The text that we set up inside that container is actually behind our images. So we're only seeing flashes of it as these images become more transparent. So we'll go ahead and save our changes here and jump back into the editor and we can fix this pretty easily. We're gonna grab that first uh, nested container in here, the one that has all of our content for our hero section. And we're gonna go under the spacing tab under outer Z index and inner Z index. I'm gonna give this a value of five and then six. We'd probably be okay with one and then two, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a five and a six just to be extra safe. Now we still do have this black background to contend with, but I'm gonna go ahead and update this and we'll refresh it so we can make sure that that section is now coming on top. And it is. Now it's blocking all of our images because now it's, it's a, a black background on top of all of our images, but we can fix that. So we'll go back here to the same container and we'll go to our background color and we can just change it to completely transparent or clear that color out completely. Now when we update that, we can go back to this front end, refresh the customizer, and we should see our animation just about done. So as you can see, it's rotating in between all these images fading in and out, and it's also zooming into them slowly as we go. So all that is working exactly like we want. We just wanna do a few little things to clean it up. What you might've noticed is that all this text is kinda of hard to read on these backgrounds. There's just too much going on. So really what you want is a bit of a overlay on these images. Now we actually have a pretty easy way to control that. If we go back here to this first nested container where all of our content is in, where we just had the black background, maybe if we brought the black background back, but we scaled it back a bit to something like 50%. Now we can hit update on that and refresh it on the front end. And we can see now that those images are a lot darker because they're being shown through that 50% black background. Now, one other consideration we're gonna have here is accessibility. Typically, you don't th like things moving around on a page. Now, the only option I've come up with this, I don't know that it would pass any accessibility standards, but I think it would help some. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna target this BG fade wrapper, and we're gonna do the hover state. And then we're gonna add the BG fade class. I'll go ahead and open those brackets. And all we need to write in here is animation play state, and we'll just do paused. And all this is gonna do is that when we hover over this section, it's gonna pause the animation. So you can see it's zooming in right now, but if I move my mouse over it, it completely stops. So this does give the user a little bit of control over the things moving around on the page. Obviously, I'm trying to do a CSS only solution here. You could incorporate some kind of play or pause button, but you're likely gonna to have to add in JavaScript to make all that work. So for now, I'm just gonna go with this uh, pausing when you hover it kind of solution. Like I said, I'm not sure that this would actually fix any accessibility issues, but it does give the user a little bit more control. So we'll go ahead and save this here. And let's go take a look at this completely out of the customizer on the front end. So we can see all the images are fading in one after the other. It's zooming in slowly the entire time, which gives a nice effect. We're on the second image here. Now we'll go into the third image and you should see after this one finishes animating, it goes right back to the first image uh, very smoothly. So just like that, we have everything set up we need. Now, I know you might be asking, what if we wanna do two images or four images? That is possible with this solution, but we're gonna to have to manipulate the CSS quite a bit. So let's take a look at what's gonna to have to change. We'll go ahead and hop back in here into the back end. And let's say we wanna add a fourth image. So we'll go ahead and grab this last container and we'll duplicate it and we'll give it a different background image. And instead of drinks this time, I'm gonna pick something completely different so it really stands out. We'll have this desk here. So we'll go ahead and update this. We'll go back into our customizer 
and refresh this so we can see the new image in there. Now the problem is, is our animation has been set up based on three different images. So we're gonna have some glitches at this point. So let's take a look at what we're gonna have to change in order to get this working for four images. The first thing we need to do is change this animation duration. Essentially, this has been calculated that every image lasts for about six seconds. So we need to move this up by six more seconds since we added an additional image. So we're gonna change this animation duration to 24 seconds. Now we have another child element in here to contend with. So we're gonna copy this uh, nth child selector, paste it again, and we're gonna change this to five, uh, the fifth child. And we need to change that delay as well. We need to go up six more seconds. So instead of 12, we're gonna to go to 18. So at this point, if we go ahead and publish this, we can refresh it on the front end and we should see the images just in the order we set them in the, in the back end. So we have this pink glass and then we have uh, what looks to be maybe some whiskey here. And we'll finally get to our last one, our, our third one that we had before and then our last one. So now we should see this last office image come in and work just fine. So just by manipulating those few little things, we were able to change this animation to accommodate four images. Now, of course, this could go on forever. We could show you five and six or one and two, uh, but I think you get the idea at this point. Everything in here is set up in multiples of six. If you felt like for whatever reason, this animation is too slow, you could change that. So let's just say we have four images. Let's make the entire animation four seconds. So instead of this jumping by six, we would just want it to jump by one. So we'll go to a one second delay, a two second delay, and a three second delay. And now that the animation is only four seconds and these are only delayed by a second, the entire thing happens in four seconds. Each frame lasts about a second. So you can go through and change all this. Obviously this is probably flashing a little bit too fast, uh, but you could go ahead and change all these as well. Hopefully you found this useful and you weren't too bothered by watching me kind of stagger my way through writing all the CSS. I hope that being able to write all the CSS and explain it was helpful to those of you who hadn't written something like this before. But if you have any questions, go ahead and drop those in the comments down below. Now I love finding different challenges like this and trying to figure out how to do it inside of Generate Blocks. So if you've come across some kind of section or page that you haven't figured out how to do, Go ahead and share that in the comments down below. I would love to see if there's a way that I could figure out to make it work to help you out and maybe create a new tutorial on it. If you want to see some other Generate Blocks content, you can click either of these videos up here in the corner and we will catch you inside the next video.